Okay. Greeting, greeting everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God. This is Nantlantla Sivanyoni from the Mission of Faith Foundation Ministries. Welcome to this channel. Um, you can subscribe, you can click the thumbs up and like the video and then comment. Hallelujah. We are glad to have you in our channel. Uh, you are welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always nice to see you again, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, wash and be blessed. Hallelujah. I believe that the Holy Spirit will bless you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are all welcome. And we appreciate you watching our videos and liking them and commenting on them. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Before I start, let me pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. There is no other God beside you, my Father. You are the King of all kings. You are the Lord of all lords. You are the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. We thank you that we are alive this morning. We thank you that we are blessed this morning for this Sunday. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have made for us, my Father. Lord, I cover this broadcast by the blood of Jesus. I cover myself by the blood of Jesus. I cover my family, my children, my husband, my friends and my family, my church, my brethren, my pastors, my bishop, my apostles. Father, I cover each and every person that will watch this video, Father, by the precious blood of Jesus. We cover their families and their children and their relatives and their properties and possessions. Father, anoint the four corners of this environment by the blood of Jesus. Let it be covered by the blood of Jesus. Let the blood hedge of protection form a protection upon us, my Father, this morning. Let the angels of the morning be deployed upon our morning, the angels of the day, the angels of the afternoon, the angels of the night, and the angels of the midnight, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. If God be for us, who can be against us, Father? We come against any forces of the enemy that may come against us, my Father. We, de we destroy all their plans and their plot against our day, against our lives, against our family, in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it is aborted in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare spiritual abortion in the realm of the Spirit of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. If God be for us, who can be against us? Father, we seek your kingdom and your righteousness, O God, and all other things shall be added unto us, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we adhere to your instruction, my Father, be upon us. We invite you, Abba Father, in this territory. We invite you, Master Jesus. We invite you, our Holy Spirit, whom we can do nothing, our help, our counselor, our mind, our spirit of supplication, our spirit of promise. You are welcome in this place. Take over our spirits, our souls, our heart, and our bodies, our mind, our imagination, our thinking process, our will, our intellect, and our emotions. Take over this territory. Take over this environment. Take over my tongue, my voice. Let it not be me that will minister the word of God, but let it be you that will use me as your vessel, that will use me as your as your clay jar, my Father, in the name of Jesus, take over me right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me die while you increase, let me die while you increase, let me die while you increase, for it is no longer I that live, but you that dwells on the inside of me, and greater is he that is within me than the one that is in the world, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, take over me, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. You are welcome again. In the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll just start by ministering. Hallelujah. I woke up with this song. Uh, it is a song by Apostle Princess Belemzi from the Ministry School of Power. Uh, the, Lord, the song she was given by, the, by God himself. In fact, she had a dream and the angels gave her this song. And the song goes like, I will love the Lord oh, high. I will love the Lord most high. I will love the Lord most high. I will love the Lord. Most high, I love the Lord. Most high, I love the Lord. Most high. 
our love alone most high and our love alone most high and our love alone most high and our love And we shall love the Lord most high, and we shall love the Lord most high, and we shall love the Lord most high, and we shall love the Lord. Most high, and we shall love the Lord. Most high, and we shall love the Lord. Most high, cause He made it all for us. Most high. Cause he made it all for us. Most high. Cause he made it all for us. Most high. Cause he made it all for us. Most high. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. She was actually, the Lord was actually saying, that the Lord created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and it was covered in darkness. And the Lord created everything on earth until the sixth day. And then the seventh day he made as a day of rest. So the Lord made sure that before he created us on the sixth day, that he created all the resources for us. So that means we ought to love the Lord. We ought to worship the Lord. For he did everything for us. He made it all for us. He provided for us. So that when he brings us on this earth, everything he has put it in order for us so that we may not suffer. Meaning that there is no human being that God is destined for them to suffer. But we suffer out of ignorance. As the word of God said in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Because when God, after he created human beings, he declared a blessing upon us. He said, let them be fruitful and let them multiply and subdue the earth. Hallelujah. So meaning... It was not in God's plan for anyone to suffer. Hallelujah. When God has created us, he declared a blessing upon us. It's in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. He said, God bless, God bless them and said, Have many children and grow in number. Fill the earth and be its master. Rule over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the sky and over every living thing that moves on earth. Meaning after we are created, the Lord declared a blessing upon us so nobody is, is, is destined to suffer but we suffer out of ignorance uh, we suffer because we don't know who we are in christ we don't know who god is in our lives we don't know who's our provider our provision we look at other people as our source of our provision uh, we, we, we we blame other people from our, our situations and we find ourselves in, 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 in situations where God has not destined for us. You may have been born in a family where there is poverty, but you can take yourself out of that situation. The minute you know who you are and who your father is, and the minute you know the blessing that has been declared upon your life, and you prophesy that declaration until it becomes manifested in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. But to Jesus, there will always be people, the people that will be poor that uh, we whom God has blessed are to assist those people. But in the natural, from the beginning, it was not in the plan of God for mankind to suffer. Hallelujah. But because of sin, we find ourselves in that kind of a situation. But it's something that can be uh, rectified, that can be corrected, because that's why salvation came. It came so that God can put us back into that power, that position of being blessed. For that blessing to be manifested upon our life through Christ Jesus. So the minute we become the children of God, we are able to possess back that 
blessing that was declared upon our lives. Meaning if I'm not a child of God, it will be impossible for me to come out of that case of poverty. Hallelujah. But the minute I become the son of God, now that, that blessing becomes manifested upon my life. But now it is for me to know about it and make sure that I declare it and work towards it until it becomes manifested. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. But Alana, today the Lord has given me uh, the message of the power of worship. How about worship? It's so important. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse 21, that the Lord created us as, as human beings. He created us to worship him. He created us for his own enlightenment. Hallelujah. His main purpose was to have people that will worship him. That you will find, that is why you will find human beings having that age to want to worship something. But today, this morning, the Lord wants us to understand what he, he created us to worship him, no other thing. Hallelujah. Now we find people worshiping their houses, worshiping their cars, worshiping their jobs, worshiping other people, making them their idols. Hallelujah. We find people worshiping money. You know, there are so many things that people are worshipping. Now we have uh, um, social media. Other people are worshipping their cell phones. The minute they wake up in the morning, we want to go straight to the, to, the, to, to, to our social media to go and, 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 <clears throat> and enjoy that. They can hardly sleep. They're thinking about what's going to be happening. They make a TV. They are, they, they are worship. You understand? So anything that you, 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 you send some sort of reverence to or becomes so close to your heart, it, it, it becomes some sort of worship. Once something is so important to you that you find yourself that you cannot even live without, and that's the first thing that is always in your mind that you really need to have. That if, like, for instance, you were to leave the house and forget your phone, you would feel like, no, I cannot do my day without my phone. I have to have my phone. My phone is like my everything. Hallelujah. And so that you come back and get your phone. Like you feel like a day you without your phone, you won't be able to function. Hallelujah. Because about worship, we're talking about the source of worship. We're talking about the source of reference, a source of honor, a source of adoration of something, something that is supernatural. So that is God. God created us to worship him, to exalt him, to honor him. But we find people honoring other things. People are entering into occultic things, worshiping serpent, worshiping idols. And that's not, that was not in the plan of God, but it's not something new. Because if you read the Bible, people of the Israelites, the Israelites, they kept on disobeying God and going worship what God has told them not to worship. Because Nkunkul was very specific in his word. Hallelujah. If we go to Exodus, Exodus chapter 34, Exodus, Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. Hallelujah. The Lord was specific in, 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 in instructing the people of Israel who they were ought to not to worship any other thing except him. Hallelujah. The Lord said, do not worship any other God because I, the Lord, the jealous one, I am a jealous God. Hallelujah. So the Lord was very specific when he was speaking to his servant Moses, when he called him to the Mount, Mount Zion to go and write the, 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 the Ten Commandments. In fact, this was the second time in, in, in chapter 34 where Moses went to rewrite now the, 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 the Ten Commandments from the Lord. So he, the Lord was specific that the people of Israel, whom God has chosen as his own nation, as his own children, that were ought to only worship him, no other God. He even gave them instruction not for their children not to marry any other nation that worships idols because they will pervert their children and make them to worship other idols and not him. But we find that most of the time the people of Israel will always do the opposite of what God has told them not to do. So we're living in a time where people don't see the need of God in their lives. They are worshiping other things because others they want wealth. So they sell their souls to the devil for them to be able to acquire possessions. Others, they sell their souls for them to, to acquire possessions. Others, they sleep for them to get them a position so that they live the comfortable life. Hallelujah. So that's why we find Ngulungulu writing the Ten Commandments. You are specifying to us, to let Ungabu Mundu who wishes other people things because you don't know what they have submitted to. You don't know what they are worshipping. So the power of worship, the devil knew that worship is so important to God 
There is nothing that is so close to the heart of God than the worship. When you worship God, you can worship God in terms of, of prayer. You can worship God in terms of praises and worship. Hallelujah. You can worship God even with your possession, with whatsoever that you have. You bring it to the house of the Lord. You bring your tithes and your offering into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. Hallelujah. That is another form of worship. That is Malachi. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. Where the Lord, I think verse 10, where the Lord is saying, we are, oh, we are, we are cursed because we are owing him. We have not been bringing our tithes and our offering into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Meaning the house of the Lord is not supposed to be suffering financially or in terms of possession and, pro and, 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 and properties. If there are people who are called the children of the Lord, there should be those whom are blessed financially. Where the Lord said, if you are blessed financially, come and give generously. Hallelujah. Meaning you are to, that is another form of worshiping God. Where you are blessed, you have enough finances. You bring your finances into the house of the Lord to help with the running of the kingdom of God. Because there are projects where you have to go out and evangelize and get more souls to the kingdom of God. All of that, it requires money. Now you find that we have Abazalwan who are blessed financially, but they go, the minute they are blessed, they come being an annex. The servant of God will bless them and pray for them. The minute they get their position that they've been praying for, the minute they get uh, 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 blessed or oh, their money is hold up, then the servant of God prays for them and they are blessed. They leave the church. They forget now would, where the blessing is. It, that is where it needs to be sustained. In Psalms 23, when he speaks about the overflow, that your cup runs over. It runs over because it's spilling and, and, and it's, it's like a cycle kind of a thing. You give and it comes back. You give, it comes back. It's, a, it's an endless cycle. That overflow, that's what it means. The minute you become blessed, you overflow so that you become blessing to other people. And the minute you do that, that flow will never stop. But the minute Kunukulu blesses you and then you move away from the presence of God, you move away from the umbilicals of God, from the territories of God, where the source of your blessing is, I can assure you that cup is not going to keep on running over. It's going to have a stop where it's going to stop. Because a blessing, it cycles over. So the, the, way, the reason why God wants us to worship him is so that we maintain in that level of overflow. We overflow in terms of our spiritual gift. We overflow in terms of us being blessed, whether spiritually or physically. Hallelujah. But we maintain our blessing by staying in the presence of the Lord and worshiping him. So there is power in worshiping God. So you worship God with whatsoever that you are able to worship. But most importantly is to stay in the presence of God and become a child of God and understand that God is your source. That you are even alive is because God has blessed you. You are even alive because God has given you his spirit. Because when God created man, he bred life unto man and the man became a living soul. So the bread that we are breathing, it belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. Hallelujah. So that's why I always say it's funny when people say they don't need God in their lives because what we are breathing, what is keeping you alive is the bread that belongs to God. If God were to take his bread from you, you will not exist. You'll be dead and your flesh will go back to where it's coming from, from the sand. Hallelujah. So now for people to move away from the source the manufacturer, the creator of them, and they feel they don't need him, they don't need to worship him. It's sad. So ignorance is killing a lot of people. So Nkulungulu, Usatana knew that he worship is so important to God. You know, we are fighting against the enemy that has an advantage of knowing who God is. See, now we know God because we see him work in our life. We see the power of him working in our life. We see him in our lives in so many forms. So we are worshiping God that we have not seen, but we have seen his power. We have seen his act. We have seen his action. But now we are fighting against somebody who has been so close to God. The Bible said, U -U -U Satan was a morning star. He was the one that will wake up in the morning and, and worship the Lord. So he knows the power of worship. That is why when the enemy comes in churches, the first thing he goes to attack is worship in church. He attacks the worshipers because he understands the power of worship. That if you want to get the heart of God, you ought to be a person who worships God. The first thing you do in the morning, you lift up your hands up how you worship the God Almighty. You thank him that, Father, thank you that I'm alive this morning. 
Hallelujah. And you take everything that belongs to you in his hands for him to protect him. To protect it. The minute we worship, even if, even if there are things that God was going to bless us, maybe five years from now or ten years from now, but because of the level of your worship, it moves God to even release things before time. Worship is so powerful in such a way that when you are going through such hardships, such trials and tribulations, where the enemy is really dealing with you, I believe some know when the enemy is dealing with you, nobody know. I don't know, I don't know. But that's one part where, where we, are, we are in that process. You must make sure that you soak yourself in the presence of God, in worshiping him and tell him how mighty he is, how great he is, how loving he is, how merciful he is. And you declare his goodness upon your life. In the midst of the storm, send his warring angels to go and fight on your behalf and solve the situation permanently. There is nothing that is so close to that. If you want to get the heart of God, be a person who worships God. Was good, there's nothing, even if I were to lose whatsoever that I have, but let me not lose the presence of God. Let me not lose the, 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 the goodness of God to see, to always see him so good, even when things are not right. Even when people have deserted you, it doesn't move you from the presence of God. Hallelujah. So Satan knows how powerful the worship is. That is why he's deceiving as many people as he can, so that they do not get to get the heart of God. Hallelujah. He wants to shift them away from the presence of God so that they don't get to know how wonderful God is. Hallelujah. So that's why after Jesus was led by the Spirit to go into fasting, the Bible says Jesus was tempted by the devil while he was fasting, but when he finished his fasting, the devil was still there. And the Bible says he took him to, 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 to place him at the high level of, 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 of the buildings, and he said, I can give you all these king, kingdoms. Hallelujah. And that is in Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why would the devil tempt Jesus about worship if the devil, the devil doesn't know the importance of worship? He tempted him with that because he understood the importance of worship, what worship means to God. Jesus answered, okay, before we go there, okay, let's go to verse 5, Luke chapter 4, verse 5. Then the devil took Jesus and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. In an instant, then verse 6, the devil said to Jesus, I will give you all these kingdoms and all their power and glory. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I wish. Verse 7, if you worship me, then it will all be yours. Why would the devil tempt God about worship if the devil is not aware that worship is so important to God? And he knew the only way to abort the mission that Jesus got Jesus was to make him worship him. The minute he bows to him and worship him, the whole assignment of the salvation would have been aborted. But it was not really about, the, the, the whole thing was to abort the mission. But what I'm getting at since we are talking about the power of worship, he understood what is so close to the heart of God. And he understood the reason why God created men because God held the meeting before he created men. He said, let us make men in our image and in our likeness. Hallelujah. So he understood why God created men. So that's why he's tempting Jesus by saying, come and worship me. I'll give you all these things. Then verse 8, Jesus says, Jesus answers, it is written in the scripture, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Hallelujah. So Jesus, because he understood what he was created for, he was not confused like some of us who don't know why they are created. They think they are here to make their own assignment. They think they are here to enrich themselves. They think they are here uh, to, 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 yes, your dreams, you must fulfill them. It's important. Every human being, the Lord will not stop you from fulfilling what you want to do as a person. But you must also, once you have done that, also understand the main purpose why you were created by God. It was not only to fulfill your own goals, but it was also to fulfill the plan of God over your life. Hallelujah. 
So meaning you, 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 it is a sin for you to die. Ufige, ufulfile, whatsoever that you want to do as your own desires. But uzuzu shone, unatolanga, what was the purpose that God has created for every human being is created on earth to come and fulfill a mission of God. assignment. Every person is given an assignment for the kingdom of God. And we are not created for ourselves. We are created for God's people. We are created for God's plan. That's why God says in Isaiah 43 verse 21, he created us for us to worship him. It is not about us. We are not created for ourselves. Hallelujah. So meaning after I've fulfilled my goals, whatsoever that I want to do with my life, now it is imperative that I don't live this life without fulfilling the purpose that God has initially brought me on this earth for, for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So the devil knows what is so important, the reason why man was created. That is why the first temptation he speaks, the third temptation that he speaks to Jesus about is that, um, uh, or the, 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 the second, the second temptation he tempts to Jesus about is for him to say, I give you all this kingdom. Come and worship me. He says, come and worship me. And I give you all these things that have been given to me. And mind you, these things he's talking about were not given to him by God. He took it from Adam because Adam didn't understand who he was. And Eve, hallelujah, from the fall of sin. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying, we must all come back to worshiping him. And understand that there is power in worshiping God. Hallelujah. So the devil knew that's why he tempted Jesus. Hallelujah. And then we go to the story of the Samaritan woman. The story of the Samaritan woman in John chapter chapter in John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. In John chapter 4. Um, verse 23. Okay. The Lord meets. Uh, the Samaritan woman at the whale, hallelujah. And then the Lord asked the woman to give her the water. And she says, but no, the Jews and us as Samaritans, we, 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 we don't get along. So you cannot be asking water from me. And then the Lord said, if you knew that the water that I will give to you, when you drink that water, because the one that I'm asking from you is the one that I will drink. I'll also be, I'll also be thirsty again. But the one that I give is the one when you drink it, you'll never be thirsty again. Hallelujah. So we find uh, the Lord Jesus having this engagement with this woman. But it gets to the part where the Lord now is explaining to her that them as the Samaritan, they are worshipping what they do not understand. Let's go to verse 21. Uh, okay, verse 19. It's John chapter 4, verse 19. Okay, after the, 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 the Jesus has told her that he must, she must go and get the husband, and then she says, no, she doesn't have a husband. I said, yes, you've been married for the last five ones, but they were not yours. Even the one you are staying with is not even yours. So the woman says in verse 19, the woman says, sir, I can see that you are a prophet. And then verse 20 says, our ancestor worshipped on this mountain, but you say that Jerusalem is the place where people must worship. Hallelujah. Then verse 21, Jesus says, believe me, woman. The time is coming when neither in Jerusalem nor on this mountain will you actually worship the Father. Meaning at that time, yes, the place of worship that was dedicated was the Jerusalem, which the Samaritans were not believing. They are believing that they needed to go to the mountains. So the Lord is saying that there will come a time neither Jerusalem or nor the mountains will be the place of worship. Meaning anywhere that people will be, they will be able to worship the Lord. They will not be limited by geographical area or location. Meaning, as Nila in Zini, I'm not limited in worshiping God. I can worship God anywhere. I can worship Ngunungulu in Sebenzin. I can worship Ngunungulu in a taxi. I can worship Ngunungulu in the car. I can worship Ngunungulu in the toilet. I'm not limited by, by location. So that's what the salvation has come to give to us. He was talking about him, as he has come, there's going to be change to that. Meaning you can be able to worship God wherever. You don't necessarily have to go to the temple, to a Jerusalem, for you to be able to worship God. Wherever, you'll be able to worship the Lord. So you are saying the time will come that neither Jerusalem nor the mountain will be the place of worship. Hallelujah. He says, verse 22, you Samantha's worship something you don't understand. We understand what we worship because salvation comes from the Jews. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Because you shall do good, they have hold on to the religious, to the customs of worshiping God. But he is saying, we know what we worship. Hallelujah. Because the salvation has come to the Jews. That's what I'm saying. The salvation has come to break out all these limitations of geographical location that you only have to go to the temple. They could only go to the temple of Jerusalem to worship the Lord. But the Lord is saying, now you can worship me wherever. Hallelujah. Now, verse 20, it says, The time is coming when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And that time is here already. You see, the Father, too, is actively seeking such people to worship him. Verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now we are able to worship the Lord wherever. The Bible is, Jesus was saying, now the time is coming since I am here. I am here to break all those limitations that were limiting people from worshiping me, that they could only go to such places to go and worship me. He says, now the time has come where the people must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, meaning wherever you are, so long as you are sincere in your worship with God, you'll be able to bring the heavens to wherever that you you will be able to bring the heavens, the kingdom of God, to come in your territory, to come in your space, to come in your presence in the name of Jesus because you are worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth and that does not limit the heavens to come down in your space and take over the territory in the mind mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying now in this season, he's seeking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. That is why he's saying we ought to go back to the power of worship. Because when we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, the Lord will come. And no situation will remain the same when we bring the presence of the Father in our midst. Everything is bound to change when the presence of the Lord comes. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying this morning, we are to worship him. That should be our priority in seeking for the face of God. In spirit and in truth, not religious act. Not religious act. You cannot be able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth if you are not living a righteous life. If you are not living a holy life, God is holy. God is a righteous God. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 